Multiple appeals for aid have gone largely unnoticed so far, with nearly half the country's population going hungry. The United Nations estimates that more than 200,000 people are on the brink of starvation. The drought crisis has also hit Somalia's neighbors, Ethiopia and Kenya, whose presidents were among the foreign leaders attending Thursday's ceremony. In addition to tackling the looming famine, Mohamud faces a grinding insurgency in parts of the country making humanitarian access a challenge. In a sign of the lingering threat, militants fired several rounds of mortar shells in neighborhoods near the airport in an overnight attack. The former academic and peace activist has previously served as president of Somalia between 2012 and 2017. Muhammad's first term was dogged by high-profile corruption scandals and political turmoil. This saw two of his three prime ministerial appointees forced out and two central bank governors resigning. The first Somali leader to win a second term, he has promised to transform Somalia into a peaceful country that is at peace with the world. He has also vowed to repair damage inflicted by months of political infighting, both at the executive level and between states and the central government. We speak now to international law expert Innocent Badasu, an expert on regional issues. Uh, he's speaking to us from Accra in Ghana. Very good evening to you and thank you so much for speaking to us. So let's talk about the significance of the inauguration and whom was being inaugurated today, particularly seeing that he's not a newcomer. Is all of this in the best interest of Somalians? Please unmute yourself, Innocent. Thank you very much. Um, it's, it's, it's an important uh, inauguration exercise uh, that has taken place in, in Mogadishu, Somalia. And it's important because we have seen, uh, if you like, major participation on the part of the international community. Uh, some other regional leaders, as you have mentioned, we're talking about Kenya, we're talking about Ethiopia uh, and, and Egypt and, and some other um, foreign countries who have asked the ambassadors to represent them. And so this is significant in the sense that prior to the election, there were indications that uh, some of the candidates, about the 36 candidates that participated, some of them were not going to accept defeat and we're likely to foment trouble. And in that case, we're going to have a large-scale election violence on our hand. But here we are, at least uh, within the context of the precarious security situation in, in, in the capital city, we have been able to swear in a new president, which means that governmental authority has been conferred on him and we would begin to see him take some uh, serious decisions as a way of... Uh, uh, peace building and also state building processes that are much needed. Mm. I mean, if we look at the security ahead of uh, the inauguration, it was beefed up, but we know that uh, Mogadishu often falls prey to attacks when one least expects it. I mean, the security situation um, uh, for the new office bearers, just going forward, can it be guaranteed? Um, is he, and also being familiar with some of these issues, being the first uh, uh, to get a second term? Yes, uh, I think that the new president um, is very much aware about the nature of the security situation. Uh, he must be confronted immediately with an agenda to embark on security sector reform. I think it's an integral part of his priorities that he must deliver in the days to come. Uh, but even prior to the election, we have picked up intelligence that there were two, at least two recorded assassination attempts, uh, except that it didn't happen. Um, today, we are told that there were still some attacks in the capital, uh, which means that Al-Shabaab is still uh, very much in, in, in control of, of its territory and continue to undermine uh, state security in the capital. And so I do not think that there is the, immediately, there is this um, security capacity to be able to deal with the challenges. It will require a lot of uh, domestic uh, decisions to be made. It would also require international partners, uh, other countries in the region, and then other 
interested bilateral donors coming together to be able to deal with the challenge. The continuous attacks are indicating that um, the new government is not safe. Uh, they will still continue to face significant challenges from the, the kinds of security situation that we have at hand. So uh, the fact that we have an inauguration does not necessarily mean that all is well in terms of security. We would require some days to see how Al-Shabaab would be confronted by the new government and what would be their response as well. And so we wait to see whether there will be a marriage of convenience between the new government or Al-Shabaab, or we'll see um, relations deteriorating or a very hostile or confrontational approach on the part of the new government and its security apparatus. What President Mohammed is promising to achieve that secure, I mean, uh, stability, particularly security stability, he says uh, it will be through consultation, mutual endorsement. I mean, how would he go about that? I'm just looking at his history. Um, there was quite a, a great deal of uh, turbulence during his term, including... Um, you know, two central bank governors who resigned, uh, three prime ministerial appointees who were forced out. Some would say that is not indicative of somebody who can live up to that. Yes, uh, when you look at his records, when he was president 2012 till 2017, of course, we've seen all manner of scandals. We've seen uh, internal uh, disunity within his political circles, as you have recounted some of them. I would want to give him some credit at the moment because at the time he became president, he was politically inexperienced. It's important to indicate that possibly he is returning as a new mm. man and his understanding of the situation would be completely different. He has a better appreciation having been in government and being in opposition. And so his decision making may be completely different. And so we need to give him some benefit of the doubt. Going forward, to talk about political stability or national reconciliation, that is obviously a very big project that I do not think that the current president can achieve within the four-year mandate that he has. It would be a work in progress that possibly may outlive his, his, his presidency. One of the things that we have seen immediately, the president has been sworn in, even before, uh, is the appointment of some rival political figures to be part of his government. So you would notice that he mm. had appointed a former, one of the former president to be special envoy on, on the drought situation. You would have noticed the appointment of his uh, intelligence security uh, head as the director of the intelligence security services. And so some of these individuals are coming from the rival block. And it gives us an idea that, yes, indeed, he may be walking the talk in the area of national reconciliation. What I fear going forward from the examples of the Ethiopian experience, it's important to recognize that it is not always the case that you achieve political stability or peace by way of ensuring that rival political uh, elites or adversaries are part of your government. What you do is that you end up possibly creating an opportunity where there would be struggle for power, and these are persons who are holding sensitive positions around you, and because he was heavily supported uh, after the first round of voting, heavily supported by opposition figures, these are persons who obviously would want power to further their own political interest or their own material interest. So in the days ahead, I expect that if nothing significant is done, we may begin to see some kind of regrouping within the president's circles, and some of them could begin to undermine his authority, taking into account that, of course, you have a clan power sharing system in Somalia where the, 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 the various uh, state governments and leaders are basically hoping that their support for federal leaders would be an opportunity for them to have access to state resources. So expectations are high at the moment. It does appear that the president is willing to continue to dish out from the favor basket, the political favor basket, to ensure that some factions within 
uh, Somalia are satisfied politically in order to ensure that he would have uh, political stability. But I am afraid that may only be a short-term solution that I do not think can deliver the sustainable peace and, and state building that we are looking for in Somalia. Mm. Um, obviously of uh, immediate danger as well. We mentioned that it in the introduction is uh, the fear of famine, of starvation. He's appealed uh, to international aid partners uh, to assist. But he also says that he's going to establish uh, a dep department of environmental affairs to um, deal with this issue. What is within immediate danger? Now, uh, I think that the, 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 the new president would have to begin to re-examine the international context within which he is coming to operate. Of course, Somalia is of regional significance. Somalia is of an international significance because of the security challenges. But he must also understand that there are other equally important significant issues on the global stage at the moment that is taking the attention of global powers. And so some of these humanitarian appeals and supports uh, may not come as, as he may expect. And so it is important that the new government is measured in its expectation of what would be coming from the international community, either by way of what the Americans or the, the British, or if you like the Chinese, or even those within the UAE may provide as a way of support for, for, for the new government. And so I would urge the government to be cautious because we have seen the, the, the failed experiences that have come with the fact that other interests are at play in a manner that the global community is deeply fragmented over what should constitute their priority. Yes, I have seen the Security Council issue in a press release about the election and the fact that some kind of a political finality has been brought about the almost two-year delay in, in the electoral process. That places Somalia on the agenda of the UN Security Council, and that may be part of the maneuvering that a new team of the government can, can, can undertake. But I, I would plead that the new government is cautious because of the new environment that we have around uh, the globe. Innocent, thank you so much for sharing your insights. Uh, international law expert, Innocent Badasu, he's an expert on regional issues. He speaks to us uh, from Accra in Ghana.